no further ado, we'll hand it over to Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, good to uh, be here this evening. My name, as he said, is Dave Thompson, and uh, I want to thank the uh, Carver County Republicans, Michelle and Bruce in particular, for having me here. Uh, this may be just a little bit of an unconventional debate. I think we ought to have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, those of you who know me and have seen me around some know that I don't always conform to convention. I, I do want to point out that uh, many of you, I needed your vote here a few weeks ago running for chair, and I've decided I like this side better. <laughs> I am much more relaxed, seems like it's going to be more fun for me than it is for you. No, in all candor, it is fun to be on your side of these debates, and hopefully we'll have a good time tonight, but more importantly, we have some serious business to do. Folks, we, we need to change the direction of this country and this state politically, and one of these uh, nine men or women will uh, end up being at the head of this government, presumably, to, uh, to do that for us. And it's very important that we get a clear understanding of where they are on the issues. Now, uh, Michelle and Bruce were kind enough to give me a fair amount of input into the format tonight. So if you like it, you're welcome. If you don't like it, they were really stupid for letting me do it. Um, and and what, I, what I tried to do is put myself in your shoes and think, what would I want to hear if I were sitting out there? And what I really want to hear is answers to questions, not talking points. And I want to hear specific answers to questions for which we can hold people accountable down the road. So that's what I've attempted to do, and I'll let you judge if we've accomplished that. But I, I would like to uh, give the Carver County Republicans a lot of credit for letting us do this maybe a little bit differently than it's done sometimes, and uh, hopefully we'll all gain some insight. Now, are you all okay being on a first-name basis? Okay, that's good. You can call me Mr. Thompson. And, uh, <laughs> that's a joke. I'm Dave. Uh, what we did is we had a random drawing for the order of seating. And now what I'm going to do with the questions is we're going to go, the first question is going to start here, go all the way down that way. Next question will start with Mike on the far end, come this way, then Pat, and go that way to, so the people who are in on the end early on will get in on the beginning on the next question, and we'll, uh, we'll see how that one works. Um, <coughs> all right, first off, I have a yes or no question, and I'm going to go right down the line, and then you have a chance to explain. Yes or no? Do you believe that man caused global warming? No, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Thompson. Oh, Is it on? Is it on? Is it no. On? No. 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 The answer was no. No, Mr. Thompson. No, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in man caused global warming? No, Mr. Thompson. Tom. No. Partially. Partially. All right. No, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> I was just kidding. No. No, Mr. Thompson. All right. No. Negative Ghost Rider. It is Negative not possible. Why don't you do that in the answer to your question? All right, now, here's your, uh, here's your 90 <laughs> seconds. You're on the timer. One of the rules we have is if you breach the time and continue on going, you don't get to answer the next question. All right, we're going to keep you in line. Now, here's the question. You don't believe in global warming. Man caused global warming. Would you commit to never supporting any more state subsidies for any biofuel programs, including getting rid of the ethanol subsidy? Go. Well, first of all, before I answer the question, I will within my 90 seconds. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to welcome uh, welcome you to Carver County. Welcome all my uh, uh, my Republican colleagues to Carver County, and thank you, Mr. Thompson, for being here. Now to answer the question, uh, I think that uh, we absolutely need to end the ethanol subsidies when they come up for renewal uh, this next uh, uh, during the next administration. It's time to stop. We've given the corn-based ethanol industry uh, an opportunity. Uh, I think we absolutely uh, can look back uh, retrospectively and say we made a mistake. And we shouldn't have done what we did. So I think going forward, uh, we need to uh, stop uh, the subsidy of corn-based ethanol here in Minnesota. I think it's very important that we continue to utilize our resources here in Minnesota uh, both our, our natural resources and our human resources, whether it's uh, scientists at the University of Minnesota or, or businesses across the state of Minnesota looking to develop uh, the new technologies uh, of tomorrow. But they should be driven by the market, not by government mandate. 
that's the problem from my perspective with, uh, uh, with the, the mandates that we've put in place in the past. And that's why I don't think they work, and that's why I think they need to stop. So I, I think that answers the question, Dave. I wouldn't support them. It does. I don't Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to hold the applause till after everybody answers these questions. Because of this number of candidates, we won't get very many questions in, and that's not going to make them uncomfortable. That's half the fun. All right, <laughs> Pat. No more subsidy for biofuel programs. You on or you off? Uh, that's right. Um, I'm going to. Uh, uh, I agree with what Paul said. I don't support the subsidies. I want to go one step further and talk about uh, some basic economic things. Anytime you subsidize uh, an industry you are uh, harming other industries that aren't subsidized on top of harming taxpayers. And that's what this has been all about. If you talk to, uh, we, we have uh, greatly hurt uh, food costs. We have hurt uh, the water tables in, uh, in the farming areas uh, through ethanol, creating ethanol. Uh, we have driven up uh, corn prices and so on, and it's affecting uh, other farmers. And that's what you get when you subsidize something. But it is wrong for government to pick and choose winners and losers. And that's a big part of what has been happening both within Minnesota and nationally. Uh, we, uh, in my opinion, government has no constitutional right or role to be doing that, to be getting involved in picking, uh, in, in the market and in picking and choosing. And it goes even further than just the ethanol subsidies. It goes all the way to, to uh, job Z zones, TIF districts, et cetera. Uh, corporate welfare, as I call it, where you're giving corporate tax breaks for certain things. It's not government's role. And if we had, if we weren't doing that, we wouldn't have businesses up lobbying up at the Capitol, either for their own break or lobbying because they're concerned that their competitor is going to get a tax break or get a subsidy. And so it's wrong for us to be in the business period. So thank you. Tom, no more subsidy for biofuels, including ethanol. You with us or you get us? Uh, you can call me Mr. Emmer. Uh, uh, Mr. Thompson, uh, first off, like I want to thank my friends Paul and Kelly Coles. Uh, they gave me directions down here tonight, and I, I managed to find my way back from the Chaska Middle School and be here on time. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing like good friends in the process. I, first off, I'll just say that I support ethanol, but ethanol needs to support itself. It's a real basic principle, and I think you're going to hear that all the way down the line. When government gets involved in trying to create jobs, government destroys jobs. When government gets involved trying to create markets, government destroys markets. People in the legislature and, frankly, uh, in government in general, I don't think understand the basic concept, what creates prosperity. You cannot take a dollar out of the private sector and give it to government and create prosperity. In fact, what you just did is you destroyed prosperity by taking that dollar out of circulation and eating it up with government. If we're ever going to make this thing work, it's not just eliminating subsidies. It's not just putting back into the marketplace competition, real competition. It's about reducing the size of government, reducing the cost of doing business in this state, and then attracting private businesses back to the state so that we can start to generate our economic recovery and then in turn generate prosperity. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Leslie, you indicated, I believe your response was partially. Is that the correct quote? About the global warming. Yes. You asked about the Man cost global warming. Yeah. What do you think about the biofuels programs? You for them, against them? And explain your view on, on global warming and man's contribution to that. Well, you know, legislators come and go and we suffer the damage of their actions. And this ethanol thing was a bipartisan legislative uh, directive. And now we realize that it's wrong. And those of us that had a little more wisdom and vision saw it early on that the energies and the technologies of the future are not going to be subsidized programs for special interest groups, whether it be farmers for ethanol or the uh, nuclear power providers. You know, nuclear power, a lot of people are talking about supporting that these days. One of the most subsidized uh, entities in America is nuclear power, whether it's the holding of the waste or the storing of the waste or keeping our fingers crossed, hoping they find a place for the waste to go. So uh, I don't support the uh, subsidies for that, but I don't mind that the state of Minnesota, through the State Board of Investment, with its dozens and dozens of billions of dollars to invest, where do they go and invest? They go and invest in Microsoft or General Motors or, or WorldCom and Enron and all those places when they should be investing some of that money in Minnesota to bring us into the hydrogen fuel and economy of the future. That's where I'd like to see us go. 
with the wind and our energy direction into hydrogen. And I don't support subsidies for anything.